Well, thank you very much. It's an honor to meet you. Thank you. Jim, this is Chuck Engel. He runs the Deployment Health Clinical Center. There's a lot of um, confusion about post-traumatic stress. What are some of the physical manifestations? Well, the, the hallmark symptoms are the agitation and being keyed up and on edge. You know, what we call hyperarousal, where you're, you know, as, as soldiers say, I'm just jacked up. I'm ready for a fight. I'm ready to save somebody's life. I'm ready to uh, combat the enemy. And the problem with PTSD is those symptoms don't go away when we come back home. It's almost, it's almost like a seizure where it, uh, they, you know, they, they don't have control of it. They don't know when it's going to happen. And they have to constantly plan so that uh, you know, if it does happen, they're in a place where they can recover. So what about the people that don't get it? Is well, there any way that you can honestly say that was a, in a great deal of intense combat situations and comes back completely fine? Yeah, I'd say it's pretty, you know, those, those folks are pretty rare. I, I mean, there, there's, there's that mythology of, of, of the warrior that, uh, you know, the only thing you should feel when you shoot an insurgent is recoil. I mean, there's that whole mystique. I would say that nobody is really unscathed unless you, you really have no compassion for human life. If you have a total disregard, maybe the only thing you feel is recoil. Everybody else carries something with them. I was never afraid until uh, we started receiving casualties on our end. We lost eight in one day. That was the first deaths in our unit. That's when it was real. That's, that's when I started being scared. I see the babies that were decapitated. They all had their feet cut off. Uh, that's the thing. I don't even like to look at feet anymore. So uh, I can still see their faces. It's a particularly disturbing feeling, feeling someone's heart beating from inside their body. I still wake up with horrible nightmares from that, sometimes crying and scrubbing my hands, trying to get blood that's not there off. I don't want to talk. I don't want to eat, I don't want to sleep, I don't, I don't want to move. I just want to sit in a corner and just be a vegetable. When I came back, it was uh, paranoia, a lot of paranoia, emotional detachment. Um, you know, my, my spouse and I, you know, like, have basically grown apart. Some things you just don't want to remember. He can block them out. And I've been blocking it for so long. I couldn't pinpoint a direct day where it'd be like, oh yeah, that happened and that's what caused it. I couldn't do it. Um, I just, I just know that it's just, it's not the same anymore. Never in a million years did I ever think that, that I would lose my mind.